In this lecture, let's recap the concept of arrow functions in JavaScript. So we can also use arrow functions in TypeScript, just like how we can use it in JavaScript. In JavaScript, we can create a function in three ways. First, by using the function keyword followed by a name for the function, let's say print. And then this function, it can expect some parameters. For example, let's say message. Now in JavaScript, we cannot specify the type of the parameter, but here in TypeScript, we can do that. So I'm going to specify the type here as string. Okay. And all we are going to do from this function is we are going to log that message. So this is one way in which we can create a function and this syntax is called as function declaration. Then the other way is by using function expression. There we create a variable. Let's call it maybe sum. And to that, we assign a function using the function keyword. But this time, we don't specify a name for the function. So we simply use the function keyword and we create a function like this. Okay. And here also, we can expect some parameters. For example, let's say num1, which is going to be of type number. And then num2, which is again going to be of type number. And all we are going to do is from here, we are going to return the sum of num1 and num2. So these are the two ways in which we can create a function in JavaScript as well as in TypeScript. The first syntax is called as function declaration and the second syntax it is called as function expression. Now the third way in which we can create a function in JavaScript as well as in TypeScript by using arrow function syntax. And in arrow function syntax, just like in function expression, first we create a variable. Let's again call it as sum and I will comment this sum function here because we are going to write this same sum function using arrow function syntax. So I will comment it here and then to this now we want to assign a function and here we want to create and assign a function using arrow function syntax and in arrow function syntax we don't need to use any function keyword. We can simply use a set of parentheses like this. In here, we can specify any parameter if we want to expect any parameter for that function. For example, num1 of type number and num2 of type number. Okay, so first we use a set of parentheses like this. And there, if we want, we can specify some parameter list. After that, we use an arrow syntax. For that, we use equal to and then greater than. So this is the arrow syntax. And after that, we can use a set of curly braces and there we can write the body of that function. So from here, we can simply say return num1 plus num2. So this is the arrow function syntax. Now, arrow function syntax has several other concepts. For example, in the body of this function, we have a single line of code. So what we can do is when we have a single line of code in the body of the arrow function, we can remove these curly braces. Okay, like this. So we don't need these curly braces if we have a single line of code in the function body. And when we use single line of code, this return statement is not required. It is set by default. So we don't need to explicitly use this return keyword. We can simply remove it from here. And what this will do is it will return the sum of num1 and num2. Even if we have not used return keyword, since we are not using parenthesis by default it is going to return the result but if we use parenthesis like this in that case we need to explicitly specify the return keyword then only it will return the value but if we are not using the curly braces for defining the body we can omit the return keyword also if your function is expecting only one parameter in that case this parenthesis is also not required so for example, let's say this function is going to receive a single number and we want to return that number plus 10. So I can say num1 plus 10. So this will be evaluated and its value will be returned. And since we have a single parameter here, we can omit these parentheses as well like this. And when we omit the parentheses that time, we cannot specify the type for that parameter. Now here we have an error because as you have already learned in TypeScript 
by default since the strict mode is on it will not allow you to create a parameter of any type you need to specify a parameter but i cannot specify a parameter like this here in arrow function syntax this is wrong this is not going to work so what we can do is instead of specifying the type for this parameter here we can specify a type for this sum variable so this sum variable it is going to store a function so for that again we use a set of parentheses and here also we use the arrow function syntax right so here we can specify that this sum function it is going to take a parameter let's simply call it as n and that is going to be of type number and it is going to also return a value of type number so here we are specifying a type for a function and this function which we are assigning to this sum it matches this syntax it matches this type because here we are expecting a parameter num1 now here we are not specifying the type but its type will be calculated from this type which we are specifying for that function so this num1 will be a number you can see when i hover over this num1 its type is inferred as number and it is also going to return a numeric value because this num1 is going to be a number to that if we add 10 the result will be number okay now we can also pass a callback function to another function and there also we can use an arrow function syntax let me actually show you that so here what we want is let's say in our dom we have a button element so we will access that button element using query selector or maybe by using get element by id so for that we can simply say document dot get element by id there we will specify the id of the button which we want to access for now let's simply call it as btn now we don't have any button element in our dom right now but this is just for explanation purpose just assume that in our dom we have a button whose id is btn and what we want is on that button we want to add an event listener and we want to listen to click event and when that click event happens we want to execute some function so here we can also pass a predefined function as the second argument or we can create a function by using the arrow function syntax like this okay and all this function is going to do is it is going to log a message button clicked so we can also use arrow function syntax for specifying a callback function so this is what i wanted to cover in this lecture i wanted to cover some basic concepts related to arrow function because we are going to use arrow functions a lot throughout this course and not only throughout this course arrow function syntax is used extensively in javascript and typescript projects because it is smaller and it is concise so that's why understanding arrow function syntax is very important this is all from this lecture if you have any questions then feel free to ask it thank you for listening and have a great day